Welcome, I'm Eileen Chung, the Programs and Audience Engagement Intern at the Colby College Museum of Art in Waterville, Maine. This is Artful Movements. Artful Movements is a part of the museum's wellness initiative under the larger program, Let Art Inspire. In this program, we select an artwork from our collection and we pair it with a yoga pose. Before we dive into the yoga portion of this program, let's first look at the artwork that inspired this month's theme. Let's be present. Today, we look at the work by Lorna Simpson, Cloudscape, created in 2004. Lorna Simpson is an African-American multimedia artist born in 1960. She received her BFA in photography from the School of Visual Arts, New York, and her MFA from the University of California, San Diego. Simpson is regarded as a pioneer in conceptual photography. She often incorporates a combination of texts and images within her works to comment on the documentary nature of found or stage images. Her earlier works question and challenge the themes of representation, identity, gender, race, and history. Transitioning into her later years, Simpson put these earlier themes in conversation with the concepts of memory and history by experimenting with various media, including photography, film, video, painting, drawing, audio, and sculpture. Cloudscape is an example of Simpson's work of maturation, demonstrating her continued exploration on memory and representation by showcasing a haunting yet captivating video projection. Cloudscape features a solitary figure, artist Terry Atkins, whistling as he becomes engulfed by fog. The image of the cloud has appeared in Simpson's other works, including her felt work, Cloud, created in 2005. In the current video work, Atkins' body moves ever so slightly, swaying to the melody of his own whistle. Along with the gentle motion of his body, the sound of his whistling feels almost hypnotizing, bringing the viewer into a trance, or perhaps a meditative state. As the video progresses, it seems as if Atkins fades within the fog, prompting the viewer to contemplate a person's relationship with their physical surroundings and thus, their positionality within a social space. In particular, how gender and race inform a person's capacity to self-determine their level of visibility. In the video, Atkins appears as more of a spiritual embodiment than human while the ethereal quality of the engulfing fog distorts and challenges the viewer's sense of space and time. The accompanying yoga pose for Cloudscape is Tadasana, the mountain pose. A correctly executed Tadasana will work every muscle in the body. It will improve posture and when practiced regularly, can help reduce back pain. This pose strengthens the thighs, knees, ankles, abdomen, and buttocks. It is also helpful for reducing the effects of flat feet. The standing yoga pose resonates with Atkins' standing figure and cloudscape. While Tadasana encourages participants to improve posture and to arrive at a state of calm focus and balance, Simpson's video work also brings viewers into a meditative state and to further contemplate one's positionality in a physical space within the intersection of gender and race. Now, let's visit our partners at School Street Yoga who will lead us in our yoga practice. Welcome. 
to the yoga portion of Artful Movements. I'm Kathleen Haberstock, and we're here at School Street Yoga. Today we're going to be looking at a very foundational pose. It actually can be the foundation of all the standing poses. Tadasana, mountain pose. And the artwork that we've been looking at, Lorna Simpson's Cloudscape. Very interesting and evocative work. So we'll be contemplating that as well as we move into our yoga. So just begin to find your comfortable seat. You can rock a little forward and back. Find what feels like center to you today. Allow your eyes to close gently or gaze to the floor and just begin to get in touch with your breath. In the artwork that you were looking at, the, um, the themes of memory and representation are very strong. The identity, and in particular, Lorna Simpson looks at African-American identity. And in this work, Cloudscape, we have an African-American man. We know from the description he's an artist, whistling, going in and out of fog. And this evokes the idea that elements are making him disappear and then reappear. That in that sense that we don't have total control of what happens to us and how people might perceive us as well. The perception that others have perhaps of African-American males. So all of that is evoked in this artwork. And in our yoga, we think about the very firm center of self. The idea that no matter what is going on around us, there could be a storm with, like in the artwork, great fog, but it will not, it will not move us. It will not make us disappear. That center within us, within each of us, is unchanging. So as you're getting in touch with your breath here, noticing your inhale, noticing your exhale, noticing the length of your spine, sits bones grounding down. Just begin to get in touch with your breath. This is, can be the beginning of centering ourselves. And I'll read to you a little bit about this idea of mindfulness. Mindfulness helps us to realize our true, clear, and spacious original nature right now in the present moment, to enter deeply and directly into the heart of our present experience and to dissolve the barrier between the observer and what is being observed. So the beginning of finding this true sense of self is to allow ourselves to be in the present. And the breath can help us with this. So just really noticing that inhale beginning of it, the middle of it, the end of it, the pause, and then the exhale. Again, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Full inhales and full exhales. We use mindfulness of breathing as a way to help us stop and truly be here. As we continue to practice mindfulness meditation, our capacity to stop and be present increases. Out of this, we naturally develop deeper concentration and the capacity to look deeply into ourselves or into whatever we encounter. This process of looking deeply is not analytical. It is spontaneous and unstudied. 
We don't have to figure anything out or make anything happen. All we need to do is to sit, be aware of our breathing, and allow our concentration and mindfulness to penetrate whatever comes along. So as you're sitting here breathing, just notice what's true in this moment for your body and your mind. There could be aches in the body or an injury. The body could be feeling good. Just notice what's true for you. And the mind might be frustrated with slowing down and sitting still. Or it might be easy to drop in. We'll find a way through the breath to maybe drop in a little more. So we'll do some Samavritti equal part breath. Exhale all the breath out. Inhale. Om one. Om two. Om three. Exhale. Om one. Om two. Om three. Inhale. Om one. Om two. Om three. Exhale. Om one. Om two. Om three. You can continue that equal part breath, noticing the inhale, noticing the exhale. You might lengthen the count if you like. Noticing that pause at the top of the inhale and the bottom of the exhale, that place of stillness might help you to drop in a little deeper and be a little more present. Next time you exhale, just draw your fingertips on the floor by your hips. And on your next inhale, we'll lift the arms. Eyes could stay closed, or you could gently open them. Fingertips might touch at the top. Exhaling, arms lower, chin lowers. Just a few like this. Can this be a moving meditation? Next time your arms are lowering, no rush to get there, but just clasp your hands behind your back. Knuckles can lower, lift the heart, big inhale. 
Exhale out the mouth and let that go. Nicely done. So we're gonna find our way onto our backs. We can find our mountain pose on our back to start. So just notice what it's like as you lie down. Reaching legs straight. Let's just take a full body stretch to start, reaching arms overhead, big inhale. Could reach more through the right side and the left side. And then coming to center, lower the arms. Feel the natural curve of the back. So we won't be flattening the back against the floor. There will be that little space at the lower back. Arms can be by your side. You can flex the feet. And just for a moment, take your hands to your upper thighs and draw the thumbs in. So you're rotating the thighs inwardly, feeling that. And that little motion of the thighs rolling inwardly is in your Tadasana. So just feeling that, that might engage the lower belly a little bit. A few breaths here. Feet well flexed as if you're standing on the ground. Noticing what this is like. As you're breathing here, I'll just read to you a bit more. So this is from Iyengar's book, Light on Life. If you balance in the present, you are living in eternity. When the intellect is stable, there is no past, no future, only present. Do not live in the future, only the present is real. The mind takes you constantly to the future as it plans, worries, and wonders. Memory takes you to the past as it ruminates and regrets. Only the self takes you to the present, for the divine can be experienced only now. The past, present, and future are held together in each asana as thought, word, and deed become one. This big inhale through the nose and exhale out the mouth. And once again, reach the arms overhead, big stretch. Hug the knees in, give them a little squeeze, rocking side to side, and we'll just rock forward and back up to seated, and then come over to hands and knees. Pull the heart forward, inhale, arch the spine. Exhale, press the floor away and round. Coming to your cow pose on the inhale and your cat pose on the exhale. We do this pose so often in yoga, but can you really explore what the spine is doing here? Noticing crown of head and tailbone moving up on the inhale and moving down on the exhale. We're gonna turn this into a flow, inhaling into cow, Exhaling back towards child's pose. Inhaling to cow. Exhaling to child's pose. Next time you inhale to cow, you can tuck the toes and exhale to down dog. But you can skip the down dog if that doesn't work for your wrists. Always inhaling to cow. Exhaling to down dog or child's pose. Next time you're in down dog, just pause. You can bend one knee, breathing, reaching through the opposite heel, and then bend the other knee. Breathing there. Turn that into a little walk. You'll walk right over your blanket towards the top of your mat. And we'll just hang here. You can grab opposite elbows, 
You can sway a little with the spine. There can be a generous bend to the knees. Just rock a little forward and back in the feet, noticing just from the balls of the feet to the heels, slowing that down and then stopping at what feels like center. Let the arms go. Inhale, flat back, hands on shins or thighs. Exhale, fold. Knees can be soft as you rise up. Reach to the sky. Exhale, hands through heart center. We'll find our mountain pose, Tadasana. So we're gonna be exploring this pose a little more. So go ahead and grab your blocks. Hopefully you have two blocks. If not, you could use a thick book. <clears throat> mountain pose, the strength of the mountain. So we're gonna take one block between the upper thighs, the narrowest level, and just start with that. So this block, it's as if it would shoot out behind you. Take your hands to your thighs and roll the thumbs towards the inner thighs. So that's the action of the legs, of the thighs. So it's as if the block would shoot out behind you that action, but then allow the tailbone to soften down and the belly to hug in. But keep that action as if the block could shoot out behind you. And then grab your other block, middle level between your calves. So that action of the top block is still happening with the inner thighs rolling in. The calves are just hugging hugging the bottom block. Lift all 10 toes and spread them. Feel the feet grounding down. And then let the toes go. There's an engagement at the lower belly. There's a hugging in, tailbone softening down, but the inner thighs still rolling back. A lot is going on in this pose. And breathe here. You can look to the horizon. Iyengar says in this pose, our feet are planted on the earth, but our heads are in the sky. So just picturing that cloudscape artwork that we looked at as we stand here in the present moment, breathing. We'll inhale, lift our arms. And exhale, dive. Knees can get soft. Folding forward. Inner thighs are still rolling back. Inhale, hands to shins or thighs flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse the swan dive. Come out and up. Exhale, palms through heart center. And then find Tadasana. Hands could face forward or face in towards you. Different lineages practice in different ways. So you can see what's right for you. But for today, maybe we'll make our hands be forward. Mountain pose. Can you feel the strength of the mountain here? And we're gonna explore this pose in other poses. This is really a foundational pose for all our standing poses. So this action in the legs. One more thing I'll add is a slight lift at the pelvic floor. So a feeling as if you're zipping up from pubic bone to belly. And you feel that inner lift and it can rise up through the center of the body right through the crown of the head. You might bring your tongue to the roof of the mouth, feel a lift there. And then feel that lift right through the center of the body. Just rock really gently again from ball of foot to heel. Legs are straight, just a very small rocking, slowing it down. And then find what feels like center. There's almost a lift at the soles of the feet. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. 
Exhale, dive over the legs. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse the swan dive. Exhale, palms through heart center and let the hands go. The feet are planted in the earth and the head, our heads are in the clouds, in the sky or the heavens, as Iyengar says. So much going on in this pose. It's quite an amazing pose. So now we'll let our blocks go and you might be feeling it in your legs. We'll stand in, we'll move our, actually move your blanket and stand in Tadasana at the top of your mat. Finding again that sensation as if the blocks were there and you can bring your hands to your upper thighs, rolling them in. Finding, maybe lifting all 10 toes, spread them and then let the toes go. You might rock a tiny bit forward and back. You might shrug your shoulders up to your ears and then let the shoulders, shoulders settle down the back. Inhale, arms out and up. Exhale to fold. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Step, step back to plank pose. Can you find Tadasana in your plank? So inner thighs are still rolling in and up. Crown of head reaches forward. Heels reach back. Drop the knees to the ground. Chest and chin come down to the ground. Scrub through your low cobra. Hands frame your chest. Shoulder blades towards each other on the back. Big inhale. And then exhale, lower down to the mat. Head can rest on your hands or you can turn the cheek to one side. Lift the right leg, please, and lower it. Lift the left leg and lower it, big toes touching. Reach the arms back. Either palms can face each other or clasp the hands at the lower back. Now inner thighs here roll in and up. Drawing knuckles back, lifting the heart and then maybe lifting the legs. But think about lengthening more than lifting. Legs stay straight, inner thighs roll in and up. Can you find your Tadasana here? Look to the floor in front of you so the back of the neck is long. Jalabhasana. and lower down. Notice which thumb is on top and then let the hands go. We'll switch the clasp of the hands and just draw your big toes to touch once again. Reaching arms back, lifting through the heart and then lift through the legs. Reaching, lengthening as much as you are lifting. Can the inner thighs roll in and up? And then lower down. Turn the other cheek to the mat. And press yourself back to a wide knee child's pose, please. Knees are wide, big toes touching. Breathing deeply here. Finding your way back to down dog in your own time. Big toes might touch, lift the right leg. Big inhale here, exhale, hug it forward and step it through. We're gonna drop the back foot, warrior one. Feet. So back heel is down, toes are diagonally pointing forward and rise up. 
Let's straighten through both legs for a moment. Bring your hands to your heart. And then keep the lift in the heart, but bend the front knee. You might have to scoot the front foot forward a little to bend that front knee. Ground into the back foot. Can you feel the feet very well planted? Reach the arms straight out and then lift the arms up. Breathing here. Warrior one, Vira Bhadrasana one. Bringing the hands to heart center. We're gonna lean forward, maybe reaching up to a warrior three, but then just stepping it into chair pose, utkatasana. So big toes might touch, lift the arms to chair. Feeling the feet again, very well planted. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, palms to heart center. We'll take a side bend. So fi find that Tadasana, but the feet are hips width distance. And then lift the right arm. We'll bring the right hand behind the head, left hand down the leg, breathing here. Now you can stay like this or reach the right arm over the ear. Lift through the right heel just a tiny bit and find more space in the ribs. And then lower the heel but keep the space. Inhale here, exhale, soften the knees and roll forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Rising back up, palms to heart center. Tadasana. Feel the strength of the mountain. And we'll come to the other side. So lifting that left arm, right hand down the leg. Hips shift to the left. Hand to the head. Elbow lifts. You might even lean the head into the hand slightly and look towards the ceiling. You could stay here or reach arm over ear. Lift the left heel half an inch off the ground. See if you can find a little more space and then lower the left heel. Inhale here. Exhale, knees can soften as you fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Step, step, back to down dog. Inhale, forward to plank. Inner thighs roll up. Breathing here, feeling the strength of the plank. And then drop the knees, chest and chin on an exhale. Inhale into your low cobra. Exhale back to down dog. Lift the left leg, please. Inhale. On an exhale, we'll step it through. Ground into the back foot, warrior one foot. Toes are diagonally pointing forward and rise up. Hands can start at hips, drawing the, back, the front hip crease back and the back hip crease forward. And then let's just straighten through both legs and bring our hands to our heart. Ground into the feet. You might lift the toes and then let the toes go. Now we'll bend the front knee, still lifting the heart, and then reach the arms forward and up. Now you, the arms may not go by the ears. They'll go as far up as is right for your, your shoulders. And breathe. Hands to heart center, please. Tipping forward. You might find a bit of a warrior three for just a moment, but we'll bend the knee and step it next to the other foot. Big toes might touch. Utkatasana chair pose. 
Breathing here. And then inhale, rise up. Exhale, palms to heart center. Standing in your Tadasana pose. Feeling the strength of the mountain. So grounding into that right leg. You can lift all five toes, spread them. And then we're gonna turn the left heel in the left heel into the right ankle and be here. This is already your Vrikshasana tree pose. So you could stay right here. Or you could lift the foot to the calf or above the knee. But wherever the foot goes, foot into leg, leg into foot, and then palm into palm. You can grow the branches and breathe here. Look at a point that isn't moving to help with balance. And if you fall out, come back in. Can you feel that lift right up through the center of the body? Hands to heart center, knee forward, and step it down. Nicely done, and just walk it out, let it go. Planting the left foot, spread the toes, and let the toes relax. Heel turns into the ankle, and breathe here. You're in Vrikshasana, tree pose. But you can also lift the foot to the calf or above the knee. Pressing foot into leg, leg into foot, palm into palm. Look at a point that isn't moving and breathe. You can grow the branches. Feeling that lift right through the center of the body. hands to heart center, knee forward, and step it down. And just walk it out, let it go. Inhale, just find your Tadasana again, your mountain pose, and exhale here. Feeling that lifting right through the center line of the body. And then we'll lift the arms on an inhale. Exhale, fold. Begin to bend the knees. You can come right to hands and knees or move through a squat, but then we'll lower the knees down and find your way to a seat. So finding your way down to your seat at the back of your mat. And go ahead and fold a blanket up in front of you. And then we'll bring it behind us. So it's a little burrito shape of a blanket and you'll sit right at the edge of it. So can we find our Tadasana here? Flexing through the feet, allowing the sits bones to sink, and hands can be by your side. This is called Dandasana Staff Pose. Breathing here, it looks so simple, but much like Tadasana, there's a lot going on. You can roll those inner thighs down like you do in Tadasana. So we can even make that motion with our hands and then just release the hands and breathe. And then we'll lift our arms up, big inhale. Exhale, letting the hands come to the knees. So now the, there is an option to use a strap. You can absolutely use your strap around your feet, pressing the strap into the feet. You'll pull on the straps and breathe here. But you're also welcome to just have hands on the legs. We want to find that flat back. So whether you're grabbing the strap or hands on the legs, just you might, you might walk the hands down the strap or down the legs, but keep the flat back. Only go as far as you can have a very flat back. Inhale here. 
Exhale, round over the legs. Inhale, come back to your flat back. Exhale, round. One more like that. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, round. Now we'll stay rounded, but can you find a little length in the rounding? You can hold on to the strap or the feet or the legs. Still flexing the feet, breathing deeply here. You might come back to that equal part breath. Three more big breaths. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Walking your hands up the strap or the legs. Moving the strap out of the way, and we'll find our way down onto our backs. Have a block nearby. Just hug the knees into the chest for a moment. Give them a squeeze, little rocking. And then lower the feet back down. Go ahead and hug the right knee in. And let the left leg go long. Inhale, let the knee drop away. Exhale, squeeze it in. Inhale, drop it away. Exhale, squeeze it in. One more like that. Take the left hand to the knee now and draw it to the left. Tee out the right arm. You can look to the right. Breathe there. Drawing yourself back up to center in your own time. One more squeeze of the knee and let it go. Hug the left knee in. Drop the knee away. Inhale, exhale, squeeze it in. Inhale, drop it away. Exhale, squeeze it in. One more like that. And then take the right hand to the knee and guide it across, across the body to the left, tee out the left arm, maybe look to the left and breathe. and then find your way back to center. Now we'll take a block and put it under the sacrum. And then hug the right knee in again. Let the left leg go long. Inhale the knee away, exhale, squeeze it in. Inhale it away, exhale, squeeze it in. One more like that. Keep it squeezed in. And maybe even hug it in a little more. But can you let that left leg get heavy and breathe? So that left heel might be touching the ground or it might be hovering. But can you make the left leg even heavier? A few deep breaths here. and then releasing, hugging the left knee in. 
letting the right leg go long. Let the left knee move away, exhale, squeeze it in. Let it move away, squeeze it in. One more like that. Keep it squeezed in, breathing here, and make the right leg heavy. Breathe into that stretch. And then releasing that left leg, both legs straight, arms overhead, big inhale, exhale out the mouth. Feet to the mat, lift the hips, remove the block, and find your Shavasana. You might put a rolled up blanket or a bolster under your knees. You could always keep your knees bent and have knees touching feet wide if there's any back issues. Arms can be by your side or at your belly. But if it's okay to have the legs straight, go ahead and find straight legs. But now we'll just relax the muscles and allow yourself to fully release here in your Shavasana. Nothing left to do. Slowly begin to deepen your breath, please. And just know you're at home, but you could stay in Shavasana for a few more minutes if you would like to. But if you would like to get up, you can begin wiggling fingers and toes, maybe another full body stretch, and then roll to either side and press yourself up to a comfortable seat. Whether you're still lying down or you're sitting up, let's draw palm against palm at heart center and bow your head towards your heart to that part of you that's unchanging, 
even as the weather swirls around you. There is a center core of you that won't be affected, that's unchanging. So bow to that part of yourself, honoring it. And honor the time you took out of your day to do this practice. Honor that you showed up on your mat to be present with your breath, with your yoga practice. Know you're taking that off your mat into the rest of your day. Big inhale through the nose. Let it go out the mouth. <sighs> Namaste. I hope to see you again soon, whether it's at School Street Yoga or next month in our next Artful Movements. I hope you have enjoyed today's yoga program. If you would like to spend more time with this artwork, I encourage you to participate in another upcoming program, Artful Meditation and Expression. Be sure to like and follow us on all of our social media accounts at Colby Museum and visit us at colby.edu slash museum to stay updated with all of our digital museum at home programs. Take care and we look forward to seeing you for our next Artful Movements.